Well, I'd like to uh, welcome you all to this lecture on the way of things and how uh, to understand and to uh, perceive the desert. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to uh, cover tracking and reading sign. Um, now, to, to understand this lecture, to start with, uh, it's going to be about tracking and reading sign, not uh, the actual doing. Sometimes you need to know the why, and that's basically which end of the uh, situation we're talking about is why you should learn to track and read sign. Uh, there's many good books written that have all the different tracks and how to identify them and the droppings and scat and, and beddings and things like that. There's many good books and anybody interested in the desert should have some of these books in their uh, reference library. But today we're going to talk about uh, why you should learn to read uh, sign and track and the importance of it uh, and some of the things you might learn about yourself and the desert. So let's get started. Um, tracking and reading sign, like so many other things, it's a natural knowledge for our mind. You know, it goes back to ancient times. And again, it's one of the things that define who we are and who our ancestors were, especially our, our hunter-gatherer ancestors. They made their living largely by doing just this. Um, and it's still practiced today in a few places in the world uh, and by even some modern people. Uh, but we need to understand that it's very important uh, to somebody, to anybody, that wants to learn about the desert. Uh, so we're going to kind of go through a history of it and some of the philosophy, if you will, of it and then try to show where and how one can learn uh, this skill. And to start with, we have to understand that, again, it's part of our nature. Other animals don't do this. They don't. Uh, an animal might follow scent. Uh, certainly a lot of predators will cue visually, like an eagle will come down on a rabbit uh, from the sky. But it's unique to us to actually see a set of tracks and follow it visually, reading the clues, uh, kind of like a Sherlock Holmes and ending up uh, at a certain place in time on an animal. So one of the things that uh, we'll see that it is a form of reading and that there's a lot of uh, information in these tracks that really uh, is a storyline. And ancient people, you know, the first people could read these, and, and you can learn to too. If you see a set of tracks uh, of a deer and then a smaller set next to it, you can kind of more or less understand that that's a doe with a fawn. And this kind of reading really gets more and more in-depth as you go and as you learn. And it's the foundation of a lot of who we are. Our written languages are little more than a form of tracking. Uh, indeed, um, the first writing uh, in Mesopotamia, uh, in that area, the Fertile Crescent, was little more than a slab of mud. You take a stick and imprint tracks and those tracks had uh, meaning. And you would read them in a chronological order, whether it was left to right or right to left or up or to the bottom or vice versa. It really didn't matter. But the point was that you were reading a set of tracks. And in that set of tracks, there were a lot of uh, abstract, if you will, ideas. Ideas that uh, at first seemed difficult uh, to uh, kind of tie them to a written language, but anybody that's tracked a lot 
will start to realize that there's all kinds of things in a set of tracks that uh, that can be read into it and, and literally read into it. Uh, for instance, uh, in, in the, uh, the cuneiform, they might have a talk about a sound or something, or in our modern English, we might uh, write about a certain sound, and that seems very abstract. But indeed, if you were coming along tracking a deer, and you saw where another male deer came in, and they were actually, you could tell by the tracks that they were fighting, you would know that there was a clashing of horns. You'd know that there was a sound. Or you could do it the other way around. You might hear at night, you might hear say a uh, bull uh, elk bugling and you say well he's off this way looks like three four hundred yards in the morning you could go out there and find his tracks when you use the other way around now you use sound to find tracks and you could go back and find tracks and actually see there was sound uh, if they were thrashing a, a tree to, to uh, with their antlers all this kind of stuff is stuff that you can actually read uh, back and forth through tracking. Um, so there's a rich, rich amount of knowledge. And, and, and really, if you can't track and read sign, and, and this might sound kind of uh, cruel or, or crude maybe, but in a sense you're, you're environmentally illiterate. Uh, and that brings all the... Uh, shortcomings of illiteracy. You're unable to literally read what's going on. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff that we do uh, that has to do with that. Our whole idea of symbolism comes from tracking and reading signs. But when you're tracking a deer, you're not tracking a little picture of a deer. You're not even really tracking uh, the hoof, you're actually tracking the hoof print, a negative of that print, and you understand that little symbol to mean deer, and another little symbol to mean bobcat, and yet another one to mean coyote, and so forth. And so our whole uh, human concept of symbolism really comes from our ability uh, to track. And, and this symbolism uh, has that ability to read more into a symbol than, than a whole paragraph uh, or even a book in some cases could tell you uh, from just a, sim a simple symbol uh, to, to maybe perhaps to show that if you were, even though a person may not be a very a skilled tracker, sometimes a single track, uh, can actually have uh, a lot of knowledge in it. If you were going up to a spring, say, and you knew what a deer track looked like, and you walk up to it and you say, wow, look at that, that's deer prints. Well, you've just learned a lot. You can now look at them prints and say, well, is there others? Is there older? It's like, is this the only new print here? You may not be able to age prints real well, but you can still look and say, it looks like only one or two animals came here. And now you know that the deer actually know about this spring. It may be 10 or 20 miles from where they normally uh, inhabit. But now you've learned that there are deer that go that far out. Uh, so a single symbol, a single set of symbols, a small set of tracks can really teach you a lot. Just one, one incident of a set of tracks in the desert, sometimes you can learn quite a bit. Uh, if you go to another uh, water source uh, and you find an absence of tracks, you sit there and you come and say, you know, there's really not many tracks here. Uh, one of the things it might be telling you is that there's a better water source somewhere else. Um, so you have, you know, the symbolism, you have the ability to read, you have all this information coming to you, sometimes even from a simple set of tracks and reading sign. 
Uh, a lot of times we get uh, people who haven't read sign or, or read track. They think that you have to be this very highly skilled person and spend hours and hours reading track and following animals. Well, a lot of times tracking and reading sign uh, doesn't entail uh, following a particular animal or even reading, trying to determine the exact time or date that that animal was there. Uh, just walking through the desert, through a, a section of greasewood, say, and being aware of what a rabbit footprint looks like and rabbit droppings, say, as opposed to a deer dropping, uh, you get a kind of a census. You get to say, you know, there's a lot of rabbit here. Uh, maybe I'm not seeing them, but there's a lot of rabbits here. So why am I not seeing? What am I doing wrong if there's a lot of rabbits here that I'm not seeing these rabbits? Uh, and then if there's a lot of rabbits in this area, maybe I ought to start looking for coyote or bobcat prints. Uh, and so you get a census on the land, uh, very easy, and this is something you can learn. And as you, as you learn and you become aware of what different prints look like, and uh, you'll begin to learn how they age because sometimes uh, the different uh, tracks, of course, can age vastly different. If you've ever followed an animal, uh, you'll learn that different surfaces age very different. And of course, some surfaces are very difficult to track across and some aren't. And that gets into where you start to walk and learn a different way of understanding the desert because it, at some point you'll come across the track of a sheep or a mountain lion or some other animal and you start to understand, well, I want to know where and what this animal's doing and I'm going to follow these tracks for a little ways. Well, pretty soon you'll find that it'll cut across something that's very difficult to track across, especially say like a big cat. They have big soft feet in any kind of firm ground will quickly uh, become next to impossible to track across. But it's possible sometimes. And you start looking for little stones that are turned. Or you decide instead of that, you look off and you maybe see 50 or 100 yards out, you say, well, there's a piece of soft ground. I'll walk that, I'll just walk to that, and then focus my attention and look for their tracks here. So you just walk another hundred yards, you get to the edge of a wash, a little dune, and you either pick up or you don't pick up that track. But the point is it has changed how and where you walk it, by learning this particular skill of tracking and reading sign. And oftentimes you'll pick up that track and that'll keep that flow of knowledge coming to you that you wouldn't have if you didn't stop and think and say, you know, I need to look at these prints, I need to look at these tracks, I need to look at what they're eating. And, and a lot of times that'll multiply. Say you're following a deer or a bighorn sheep, pretty soon if you're tracking them, you're going to learn what they eat. And you'll be able to put that into a context that you would never understand without tracking you will start to look at it and say, well, this particular time of year and in this particular type of plant community, uh, the sheep or the deer were eating this particular plant under, and this plant's in a given uh, condition. Uh, and all that is knowledge that you will learn uh, from learning to track and read sign. And so it becomes an important tool in anybody that really wants to know the way of things, you have to become environmentally literate. You have to learn to read. You have to learn to read and track. And it's not that difficult because it's the natural knowledge for us, hunter-gatherers. It's what we've read for many, many, many generations before we had the normal, modern, written texts. Um, and so with that, I hope that it gives you some insight into the value of reading 
uh, sign and tracking. And then it gives you some insight that you can also learn that this is not something that only Native Americans can do or only somebody that spends a huge amount of time out in the wilderness uh, can do, but rather that every time you go out that you can begin to spend a little time looking at the ground, looking at the tracks, and just ask yourself, what does that tell me? What, where, where does that lead me to? What kind of ground were these prints made in? And you'll start to learn to track and read sign. And I assure you that it will be a, a rich vein of knowledge. Uh, and you will learn a lot. And with that, um, I thank you and hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thank you.